Once you have an idea of what your topic is and what question you want to answer, your first instinct might be to start searching in Google and other places to look for sources. Maybe your instructor told you that you need to find at least three peer-reviewed sources, so that's what you're going to look for. But hold on for just a second. Instead of thinking in terms of sources, think about what kinds of evidence will make your case or answer your question. That will help you decide where to search and will help you know when you found what you're looking for. You can start blindly searching, but you'll have a much easier time finding sources that will actually help you answer your question or support your argument if you first figure out what sorts of evidence you need. There are all kinds of sources out there. You may have heard of primary and secondary sources or scholarly and popular sources. These are terms that describe different types of sources based on who produced them or how they were produced. Knowing the differences between them and what each are good for is valuable. However, all of those types of sources may be useful for your research, depending on what sorts of evidence you need. So instead of thinking in terms of sources, think about what types of evidence will make your case or answer your question. For example, if you're looking at why people buy local, what evidence will you need to answer that question? You'll probably first want to get a basic overview of the buy local movement. Then you'll need some data on trends in buying local. Maybe you can find some market research on buying local. You might find scholarly studies on motivations to buy local from experts in psychology, sociology, or business. Also, you might want to look at what regular people say about why they buy local, which you can find through blogs, websites, newspapers, and magazines. If you're exploring the formation of the Tea Party movement, you can start with some general works that provide background on what the Tea Party movement is. Next, you might want to read memoirs and interviews with Tea Party leaders, newspaper articles from early in the history of the Tea Party, and websites designed to recruit Tea Party members. Probably some scholars have already done research on the birth of the Tea Party movement, so you'll go find those expert opinions. You'll also want to look at any works that are thought to have influenced the Tea Party, such as the speeches and economic policies of Ronald Reagan. In each of these examples, you'll need a mix of expert, scholarly, and popular information, as well as both primary, secondary, and reference sources. A politically biased website doesn't necessarily have to be a bad source, and a scholarly article doesn't necessarily have to be good. Sources aren't good or bad in and of themselves. They're good and bad depending on how they fit into your specific needs. And if you don't know what evidence you specifically need, how will you know if it's good or bad? And if you get stuck, ask a librarian. We're happy to help.